What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video. We've been having this issue lately. I'm with Devin, obviously, as you can see. And I just, I just want to allow you to break this story down because it's really funny how, every, how all this occurred. And from the very beginning, we... We've been having this problem. Um, we've been living in this apartment for a while and our we live in a downstairs unit our previous upstairs unit tenants were really good friends of mine actually they were amazing people we became really close like over the years that they lived above us and um, unfortunately they moved out and we were kind of excited to see who is going to like come next who might be our new friends mm -hmm. and um so it was nice for a minute having a nice quiet ba uh, Empty vacant apartment. upstairs yeah and not that much noise and the last tenants weren't really much noise either and um <laughs> everything changed one yeah. fateful night yeah so like one evening it's like super late at night it, 11, 11 or 12 they start moving things in so they were moving things in until late in the early hours of the morning slamming boxes down not putting it gently just kind of throwing it in there mm -hmm. and i peep outside and um i i love this and this is actually a very good let go example uh from alex and i'm like i'm getting kind of flustered and um upset that these people are moving in so late and i'm getting peep, bad vibes immediately right yeah and i peep outside and i'm like it's it's some guy just moving in and alex is like yeah i mean it makes sense it's just some guy it's just a guy <laughs> i was like thinking i was trying to think about you know like how it couldn't be that bad like hopefully it's just a guy moving stuff in i was like yeah if he's a single guy like maybe he's just getting into it right now maybe he's like a little bit unorganized that's why he's getting to it late in the evening who knows maybe he's trying to beat the heat i was coming up with all kinds of like ideas for why this could be that that were more like glass half full optimistic examples but as it turns out these people are just i don't know how to describe this without sounding like of course, you meet certain people that, you know, you don't, they'd rub you the wrong way or whatever, but these people are just very bombastic individuals, like... Very inconsiderate of anyone else in their space, and yeah. when you... There's sort of a unspoken code when you live in apartments, especially upstairs, downstairs apartments. Um, there's always a joke, um, a packet of... Um, like upstairs living package and it's like wearing stiletto shoes and moving your furniture around at odd hours of the night and it's a joke and I realized why it was a joke and it's because I it's, haven't heard that before <laughs> but it's it's a very I guess real thing and um they were just the guy excessive. works the guy works in construction so he would According to her, this is like after the first few nights after they moved in, we couldn't get any sleep literally because they, he was like stomping around in like work boots at like three, four in the morning, like three to four, like continuously. Mm -hmm. And we come to find out she's like, oh, well, yeah, he works in construction and then she has odd work hours as well. And so there's almost like constant noise and stomping around, really heavy stomping. At all hours. At all hours of the day. We, in fact, we waited to record this video because they're actually moving their stuff out right now. And we couldn't even record just now because of how loud and how noisy they were being. But... Over the course of like them, that first first two in interactions that we had with them, we were telling them like very politely, hey, could you guys just be mindful that we're down here? Yeah, we, before we're, getting like any... Um... We're not getting any sleep. We're, before, yeah, before having any sort of argument or anything, it's just like, we just want to let you guys know this is really like we haven't been able to get any sleep the past two nights. And if there's anything you can do to kind of mitigate the noise, the, the ceilings are thin, the walls are thin, and we can hear everything. Like we can hear their, them talking because they're very loud. And so everything that they do, that they do, them walking around is like stomping. And she's was saying that, oh, she's like a bigger person or whatever, but you know, you have parents that are 
On the larger on, side. Yeah, and I we our neighbors previously weren't like the smallest the smallest people. people either, and we've never had an issue though. Like it was fine. Like yeah, we'd hear every once in a while if they were having a fight or something, but it wasn't something that would be like constant and affecting our sleep. Yeah, so much so where we had to like buy a, a sound machine. Um, and I, I had spoken with them. I went over multiple times before even getting any sort of involvement in the office and just let them know, hey, ceilings are thin, walls are thin. Uh, can you please just like be kind of careful? And it was only excuses. And I feel like a lot of times it only got worse. And um, <laughs> then <laughs> I would even, I, I came to even just like, you know, being that neighbor, like tapping on the ceiling with a broom, whenever they get very rowdy, just go like, oh, yeah, you know, like, hey, or knock, knock on the wall. Well, because it evolved like from just being them being noisy to them having a bunch of people up there. You said that you went over there and you saw like six or seven people. Yeah. up in the apartment so for reference we live in a, about a one bedroom a, it's a, a one, one bedroom, bedroom unit 800 square feet unit apartment not the biggest and so it's perfect size for us and our for or our, it's perfect size for us yeah. and our two cats well it's it's meant to be yeah like you know two people at the most living here comfortably maybe three at the max if you're really stretching it but they had like six or seven people up there a bunch of kids running around, running up and down the stairs, screaming, throwing stuff. They're throwing trash on our patio here. And you went and talked to the kids and you, and you said, hey, can you guys please not throw trash on my patio? You talked to multiple members of their family. I don't know what if it's a family or what's going on, but like- you, Multiple I, members of whoever's- Whoever was there, up there. Asking them please. And it is has evolved to the point where even fractures are forming on our walls yeah there's literally, and, literally cracks in the walls from how like much impact whatever they're slamming stuff or whatever they're doing and every time we talk to her she's like there's no slamming going on but there an there fact. is though like yeah it was like keeping us up at at night and keeping it so that even during the day like if we're trying to get work done or whatever we just like really couldn't focus and then there's the cat the cat yes so at one point or another, this must have been at now, this must have been like about a month ago that this started, but there was just like these howls of a cat and you can tell it's a cat. We caught it on recording multiple times. We showed it to the people from the office, sent them recordings of this cat sounding like it was locked in a cage or something, mm -hmm. sounding like it has had been neglected. like neglected, potentially like yeah abused and so she eventually because there wasn't anything being done about the situation either and we could hear this cat as well in addition to all this stuff that it like started taking a, an emotional toll on her and she was getting very upset because you know she loves animals and so this whole thing was just like from very like a bunch of different all of this stuff going on at one time so yeah no sleep you, only hearing like this cry of a poor animal and um, had contacted the office and it got to the point where I was contacting and just even outside the way that they would park, they would, uh, they hit my car, backing out, they would take up multiple parking spaces and have litter everywhere. Even outside right now, we took a walk and there's a beer bottle out there just yeah and it wasn't like this before they moved in here i mean it from our understanding too they were they moved in under like some special lease terms i'm not sure what those were but the point being that eventually you took to writing a review on google right yeah of I the wrote situation a very uh strongly worded google review um because i was just like these people need to go like they are we live in a very nice neighborhood in a very nice part of town and i had taken a lot of pride in this place very excited even the first time alex came over he commented on how amazing of a location it is and amazing of a place it was mm -hmm. and it just went downhill so drastically fast yeah and the living situation just being uncomfortable basically in your own house when you feel like you can't have peace you can't have quiet you can't 
come here as a restful place. And yeah, I know that some of you probably can relate to having poor roommates, poor neighbors, whatever the case. And so eventually, I was like, they, they need to go. And the, uh, the manager wasn't giving me the property owner's information because I wanted to let them know what was going on. The, the property manager wasn't, um, she just kind of said, if there's a noise complaint, call the cops. I can't do anything about the stomping. And I'm thinking you can, like there's fractures. Yeah. This isn't normal. This isn't a normal situation. And I'm seeing eight people living up there in a tiny uh Yeah, so you unit. you emailed her like all this information. I did, yes. Yeah. Did you show her the pictures of the cracks in the walls too? Yes. Yeah. I sent her pictures of the cracks in the walls and pictures of the our ceiling light fixtures that are now falling out. Yeah. Uh due to their excessive stopping. Yeah. Um, so I wrote a very emotionally driven review about this place. I hadn't um, originally written one five-star review about this place and the property manager, property owner did respond to it saying like, thank you like so much for your review. Cause like, I love this place. And I changed it to try to get their attention. Cause this <laughs> yeah, cause they manager went... wasn't giving me like any sort of help with the situation. Yeah. And, um, since then, yeah, it's just funny that we came back today and they've got their truck loaded up with their stuff. Like they're taking their mattresses and all their stuff out. So I guess, and you've been, you've been saying like, they're going to, I'm going to get them evicted. You're like, <laughs> they're going to get evicted. They're going to move out. I, yeah. I was saying like, they, they can't keep living here like this. They can't. Um, like they need to go, like they need to just get Taking, evicted. Like disturbing our peace here. Disturbing our peace, disturbing the property. Yeah. Bringing down the quality of living for like every unit that they are touching. Yeah. Um, and we, we, there's like a good amount. This isn't like, you know, we pay rent here for like a peaceful situation to, and to be able to get good sleep at night. And like mm -hmm. all of these things should be included in that. A part of the deal. But, and they were up until them moving in. So it's just really funny though, cause you told me that you actually had like a vision of, cause I was here, I was here by myself yesterday cause she went to work, she was at work and there was a knock on the door. It was like a pretty aggressive knock. And I actually like looked through the window to see who it was. And I saw that it was the neighbor, but so I, I came around to answer the door but she had like left already and gone into her apartment. But then when I told you about that, you told me that you had, that you, that you had this, explain that, explain your. So I had had just very strong visuals of our upstairs, the, the lady of the house, um, knocking on the door, like banging on it aggressively and um coming at me in a very aggressive way saying how she had been evicted and got like we got our way and basically like are you happy now and um <laughs> like congratulations just, yeah. you got like we're evicted now are you ha yeah are you happy yeah and like honestly yeah <laughs> Because if they're, if you're a person living in a place and you're not considering, in, in an apartment and you're not being considerate of anyone else's living situation, only your own, so much so that you are ruining the quality of life for the people around you, we're all in a community and that is not a community mindset. Mm -hmm. And especially with how many people and young, impressionable children that they had in that place too, that they're having these drugs around them. Cause every time I go over there, I get the, this like loud smell of drugs and whatever like your prerogative is, that's fine. But doing that around under eight year olds, like eight year olds and lower, that's not okay. Oh, there was also like a lot, like a considerable amount of cigarette smoke. And mm -hmm. I noticed that like yesterday and the day before and they would be vacuuming all the time too. And we, we suspect that they were vacuuming when they would be smoking cigarettes up there because 
it was like such a strong stench of just really, really like bad cigarette smoke. There's different levels of cigarette smoke and this was just like the worst, like get into your clothes, get on your skin, mm -hmm. absorb into everything type of smoke that would just be like right in our apartment, like right outside, right outside the apartment. Luckily it didn't actually get inside of the apartment, but our car outside, which was parked outside was smelled like that. Like we yeah. got into our car and we couldn't even get the smell off the car or like off of ourselves. Yeah. So the, all of that to say like that it was cool because we, like I didn't, I genuinely, it was annoying. These people's presence upstairs was very annoying, but I didn't care about it that much. And that's like the lesson here is like, yeah, like I, I would love it if they just moved out, but I, I wasn't holding on this tight, which I think a lot of the times we do when it's like very, things are very near and dear to our heart. Like let's say it's our, our project our creative project or that relationship or the money thing, you know, stuff that like the big things, the big things that people really want. And it's just a reminder to, you know, you guys and to us, or it's a reminder to ourselves and everybody that like, you can get your way, but, and yeah, there, there was action steps in there. It's like, she put it out. She put out the, the little, the emails, the messages. Yeah. She took plenty of action on actually, you know, we actually talked to them multiple times to try to get them to change their behavior. And eventually now here we are today and they're moving all their stuff out. And I don't know, I feel like I just heard a creak in the ceiling. So she might be upstairs still moving stuff out, but their entourage or their squad like left They've been doing multiple trips back and forth all day today, just getting rid of everything mm -hmm. in the apartment. So, yeah. <laughs> I want to add in there too that, um, like, in addition to the cigarette smoke mm -hmm. thing, yeah, that's fine. Like, certain properties, certain properties allow it. Yeah. Uh, we pay extra. Like, it's part of our property rules and policies that this is a smoke free property mm -hmm. and I'm like extremely asthmatic so it's yeah. not even like me like crying a river over spilt milk it's yeah like, like a legitimate I cannot thing. breathe mm -hmm. and it was so bad that yeah like Alex said it was in our car and on our it, clothes it like getting us in into the face as soon as we opened up the door we were still smelling it an hour and a half later while we were at the gym mm -hmm. just in our clothes because our it, clothes. it had gotten into the car and then from there into our clothes. So yeah, just really, I obviously like not an ideal situation. So, I mean, that's what you can boil this down to is like a living situation, changing it. I so remember yeah, changing your living situation. You don't like your situation, change it. There are ways to go about it. And especially people, people who create a negative living situation for you, you can change that. Mm -hmm. as well you have your rights whether it's a tenant violating policies or just a bad roommate situation you can change it and you can change it for the better yeah absolutely i feel like maybe it's tougher with a roommate because i had a terrible roommate and i would have loved if like i had you around at that time <laughs> to like learn how to deal with that situation i didn't know what to do i honestly i went back home for like several months during that situation because it was so bad I, I really didn't know what to do mm. to get rid of him or to get him out of that out of there or to you know switch up the situation but with that being said um you know it, it is a case-by-case -case basis like roommate things they might get trickier they might get more nitty-gritty but there always is a way i'm sure that people with bad roommate situations like if you do talk to the leasing office if you bring it up with them and tell them that you're not satisfied this wasn't like what you would agree to and whatnot like there there probably would have been a way for me to kind of like remove that situation as well like remove myself from that situation as well but i didn't um yeah, we all have our rights and what we're entitled to. And it is in our tenant rights. And a lot of it comes down to um, livable and humane livable circumstances. Mm -hmm. And this was not like by any means. Yeah, humane. this was like so many strikes that they had done that it was like it was it's almost kind of like about time. But I thought it was very we just both were like laughing when we saw this because I know that she's been putting that out there. I've been putting it out there. And so here, here we are. <laughs>
anyway, <laughs> anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, su little story, success story. Yeah, exactly. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we did. <laughs> We're about to go celebrate right now. <laughs> Um, in all honesty, though, like Devin's birthday is coming up here in a couple days, and so we are going to celebrate. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Much love as always. Drop us a like, drop me a comment down below, or a question if you have any, and I will re be replying to those. And with that being said, guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye.